One of the best ways to use a team site is to share documents uh, across a team that you have pre-established. You'll notice that on the home page of our team site, we have a documents list. We can click on new and add an online Word document, Excel sheet, uh, presentation, or another OneNote notebook. Uh, you'll see that the Excel survey option is also there below. We can also upload our own content. So say we have Word documents uh, or videos that we want to upload. Maybe there's some screenshots or images that we want folks to have. Uh, we've got a flyer here that I'm going to upload. Once it's finished uploading, it should show up then under my documents list so that anybody who is a contributor or visitor to my site um, and they have the correct permissions can then uh, select that document, uh, download it, and share it with others. Now, it's important to know who you're actually sharing with, so let's click on the Shared With button and then click on the Advanced so that we can review the defaults that Office 365 sets for the Contributors group and the Owners group as well as the Visitors group. So, that Contributors group uh, that student group that I told you to relabel, they have edit permissions for that document, which means that once I've uploaded it, they can go in and uh, change the text, they can mark it up. Um, they, then the owners or the teachers group uh, has full control of that document. They can delete it completely, um, they can restore it, and they can also change the permissions. So as a teacher, as an owner of this site that you've created for your class or your project or your club, you could go in and restrict students from only being able to read that document. They can maybe uh, download a copy of it, but they can't do anything more than read it. It's important to note too that visitors, that is folks who uh, have the link passed off to them, uh, so perhaps someone copies the link and passes it on to another student. Uh, they can still read that document. And again, we can change that permission level um, if we needed to. Um, but we're going to go back. Some of the other features of Office 365 may not come as naturally. Say, for example, you want to rename this vendor flyer. Uh, you need to first select the file and then click on Manage, and you'll have a uh, properties in there. Under the properties is where I can go in and you can see I can rename it. I could also delete that file if I wanted to. If I wanted to create an online Word document, say I wanted to create an agenda uh, for us to discuss, the online version of Word opens as soon as I give the document a name. You'll see the uh, ribbon bar that is the uh, menu for all the different Word features is very similar. It's a little bit more watered down. Now this document is constantly saving. That's important to note here. Uh, so when you go into the file menu, there's only a save as. That's because, again, the document is constantly saving. So as soon as I'm done typing, I click on file, and then I can click on exit. Um, in order to uh, close out and go back to my site. Let's check the permissions on this file as well so that again you can understand the defaults. Um, when I check the advanced permissions for this Word document that I just created, um, by default uh, students have uh, edit permissions to that document. You don't feel comfortable with normal visitors. You know, Say maybe uh, one of your students passes on the link to a friend um, you can, again, change those permissions to that document by clicking on the checkbox next to the group and then clicking on Remove User Permissions. You'll see that then any visitors can't even click on that link. They're gone. They can't read it. They can't see it. The only folks who then have control are you, the teachers. You have full control over the document. And then the students can edit those documents as they see fit.